Hello and welcome back to the studio. I'm Paul from Paul Ranson Art. Today it's Enchanted Falls Oval. It's a Bob Ross classic and one that I've enjoyed painting again. I've added a few little extra twists in there. We'll start off with some black gesso, some liquid clear, and then I'll be using something called Christmas Brown. You don't know what that is? Well, sit back and I'll explain it all. Happy painting, people. Here's my canvas. I've used some sticky back plastic and cut out an oval shape. I've used a couple of map pins to give me the horizon line and this will give me the position of the waterfall. The first thing I need to do is to prepare this background. I'm going to be using some of this, black gesso, but black acrylic will work just as well. I'm going to use a piece of sponge to stipple on a pattern for the background, but you could easily use a piece of screwed up paper towel work just as well. I'm just going to take a small amount on my sponge to start with and lightly mark the horizon line. Nothing too solid at this stage. I want to leave the centre of my oval fairly open, so I'm going to keep the foliage to the outer edges. And again, just some light marks to start with, more just for reference. I'll darken things up as I feel more confident on my position. The lower part will be solid black. I think I'm happy with that. So let's start filling this in. I get some more paint and working from the outer edges, I tap and create these lovely inward leaning branches. Now try not to make them look too regular. Turn the sponge around in your fingers occasionally so you don't get a repeat pattern piece of sponge by the way was actually a car sponge I just distressed it a little bit with a pair of pliers here's a close-up of what I'm doing as you can see by just turning and tapping the sponge you can create a lovely dark shadow for some trees Here's my finished background. As you can see, I put on just a few touches of dark in the background for some distant trees, but I've left it fairly open. The foreground is simple. It's just solid black, but don't lose the edge of your oval. You don't want to paint something on the mask. So here's my finished canvas. I've left it to dry for an hour or two. Make sure yours is completely dry before you apply oils. First thing I'm going to apply is some Bob Ross Liquid Clear. I've got some in an airtight pot. It's easy to get your brush into. I'm going to be using two Bob Ross one inch brushes. One of them slightly older and the other one slightly newer and softer. I'm going to use the old one first to scrub on the liquid clear. I'll use a liner brush, a fan brush and of course a palette knife. I'm going to take a small amount of the liquid clear and scrub it in really well. Be careful, near the edge of the mount, you want to be brushing inwards. Otherwise, liquid clear could leak under the edge. So, just be careful. Scrub this on very well. And then when you think you've got it covered, just take your finger and run it across the canvas. It should feel just slightly oily. If you're not sure how to apply liquid clear, I've got a video on the subject. I'll drop a link in the description down below. I'll need this brush again, so I'll give it a nice dry clean. Squeeze out all the excess liquid clear. Here's my palette. I've got titanium white. I have some Christmas brown, which is 50-50, sap green and crimson, and yellow ochre and Indian yellow. Christmas brown is like the green leaves of a holly bush with red berries. I'm gonna put some of that Christmas brown over the entire canvas using my old one inch brush. But I want just a glaze of color. So take a very small amount, just a little bit, and test it on your canvas. Where the canvas is still quite white, you'll see it provides a nice warm orangey brown color. In the black color, you can be a little heavier. See, quite thin here. I'm 
I'm going to use my hand to test my color. I use a different finger in a different area. So you can see my little finger and my ring finger. They're quite thin, they're near the top, but near the bottom and the darker areas, I want it quite well covered. So it's thin at the top and darker towards the bottom of the canvas. Next, I want to create a nice warm glow in my painting. I'm going to take my nice blush, which I haven't used yet, with a small amount of titanium white and a little bit of Indian yellow. I want a lovely rich glow, not too white and not too egg yolk yellow, somewhere between the two. Pale primrose is about right. And you see, I press my brush and pick up a nice amount on the tips of my brush. I'm going to use this to swirl in some light from the background. I'm going to have the brightest area right in the very centre. About here. Go straight in with the brush and just make little circles. I'll get my hand out of the way in a second. That's better. So you can see, I'm just tickling my canvas. The white is quite opaque, but if you apply it very thinly, it becomes like a golden fog. And that's the effect I want. So it looks like sunlight bursting through from the background, creating a lovely bright glow. There we go. Add a little bit more white in the center there, just to brighten things up. Take regular steps away from your painting when you're doing this. You can check how bright things are getting. They can look quite bright when you're close to, and when you stand back, you see you need to go back and do more. So you can see my dappled light is really looking quite effective now. It just looks like sunlight streaming through a woodland. But don't lose these dark areas. You need those to give you all that lovely atmosphere. I'm going to take a small amount of my Christmas brown colour, just a little bit. I want to create a sort of pale coffee colour. I think that's a bit too much. Tidy up my palette. I'm going to use some of this off-white colour. As I say, I just want a sort of a pale coffee colour. And I'm going to create some nice background trees. This looks about right. Somewhere between the lightest and the darkest values. And I'm going to be using this on my nice brush again. I'm going to be using just one corner of my brush. So pay careful attention to how I load it. I pull the paint flat and then I push up as though I was sweeping up some leaves. But I favour, this time, the left corner of my brush. This gives me a little bit extra paint and it'll be the corner of my brush which I actually use to paint some trees. Now notice I tip my brush over at a slight angle so that the corner with the extra paint on it is what makes contact. And I'm stippling the paint on. I am not brushing it. And notice how I want this to look like branches leaning in from the side. When I do the other side, I'll load the right hand corner. So whichever side you're doing, load the appropriate corner. Don't kill off all the lovely dark, but if you do, I'll add some dark back in as well. Here we go. Just the last few touches. And you can see I've created this lovely golden foliage, all leaning in from the edge. I dry clean my brush and load a little bit of that Christmas brown. Just a nice strong dark colour here. And again, I load just one corner more than the other. This side needs a little bit of extra dark foliage. So this is the third layer of foliage. The background was that very hazy look, then some light golden foliage, and then this lovely dark, deep brown foliage. I need some trees to hold this foliage up. For this, I'll use my liner brush, and I've got a little pot of some odorless thinners. I'll just take a couple of drops and I'll put it onto my palette and I'll mix up firstly some of that light brown gold colour. Just thin it down a little bit, not too watery. And in the background, I'll start adding some little branches, sticks and twigs. They're very faint and small, but lovely detail and people will love this in your paintings. So make sure you put in lots of nice detail. Here's a close up of what I was doing. Once you've added these, you can then come back and add some darker ones. But 
move them further to the edges of the oval. If you like my videos and want to show your appreciation, you can always like, subscribe, leave a comment. It doesn't cost anything, but it really gives my channel a boost. Thank you. I want to sink some of these tree branches into the back of my painting a little bit. So I'll just tap a little bit of dark foliage over them here and there, and maybe a little bit around their feet as well. That looks better. Now they've really settled into my painting. Gosh, we're really moving on now. And I think we'll be ready soon for a waterfall. Join me for part two of the Bob Ross painting, Enchanted Falls. But in the meantime, there's something else just as fun to watch. So don't go away, watch another painting. Until next time, happy painting people.